Just the facts, ma'am. The first startling allegations in an FBI investigation of a Frisco healthcare company. The feds claim the owner regularly told nurses to overdose hospice patients to speed up their deaths, all so he could make more money. Hey y'all, this video is going to be about for-profit hospice care. And as you saw from the little news clip, yes, we're going to cover the story of a hospice in Texas that has been busted for killing numerous patients. I also want to give credit to a subscriber, A River, who brought this topic up. I was not aware of the hospice uh, limitations and how they're billed, and he mentioned it once I looked into it. Yes, it turns out it's it's pretty scary business. So I'm going to start off the video with talking about how their billing is done and how that basically motivates them to do some really not nice things. And then after that, we'll get into the Texas story. So as you're probably aware, the U.S. population is aging. The baby boomers are getting older. As a result, there's a huge market growing for services for people over 65, whether it's retirement homes, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, hospice care, etc. That's bringing a lot of new people into the market to make money because every year that market is, is getting bigger and bigger. And it used to be the case where most hospices were nonprofit. They were run by religious charities, nuns, things of that nature. That's not the case anymore. Currently, about two-thirds of all hospices are for-profit, and that number grows every year proportionally. Approximately 85% of the people that enter hospice do it through Medicare, and Medicare has some very odd billing rules that really affect the way the industry works. For starters, Medicare sets an aggregate cap on how much can be billed. So hospices can only bill up to 28000 per year per patient. However, it's not really on an individual basis, it's on a group basis. So if some patients use more than that, then other patients need to be under in order to have it work out. If at the end of the year, a hospice has billed more than 28000 per patient across the board, Medicare is going to charge them back. And for a for-profit hospice, that means they're going to be losing a lot of money. So what many hospices like to do is sign up people that are not going to cost very much because you can see from the rate chart they can be getting $160 a day for weekly in-home care which might involve they provide your meds, they cover some medical procedures and they send a nurse by once a week. That's a sweet deal for them and there's a good profit margin. However, if you get really sick and you require 24-hour continuous care or you actually need to check into the hospice facility your costs are going to go up really fast. As you can see, it could easily cost them about $1,000 a day, at which point you're going to reach your $28,000 cap in no time. And that's where the trouble comes in, is when patients do require continuous care or they check into the facility, soon they're becoming so expensive that it, it's too expensive to keep them around, more or less. If they don't die quick, the, the hospice is going to lose money, and for a for-profit company, that could lead them into bankruptcy. Now, when hospices realize they're going over budget, they've got some really expensive patients that are beyond the 28000 mark, one way to fix that is to find other patients that are going to die really quick and not cost much money. Because if you check somebody in, they die a day later and they only ring up maybe 2000 in charges, you get the full credit for their $28,000 budget that you can now apply to the more expensive patients. So some, some look for people that'll die quick and others just call it a shortcut, and they make people die quick. So, to give you an idea of how they recruit non-terminally ill patients into hospice care, here is an example. This company, Aceracare, was busted for uh, Medicare fraud. This is back, I think, in 2008. A regional sales director in 2007 was placed on a correction action plan in part because his region failed to admit at least 33 people each week for hospice care. In June, the company offered a massage chair as a prize to the employee who wins the game by meeting its admission goal and being the first to admit a patient in July. And it goes on to talk about how they recruited patients to avoid exceeding the cap. Medicare has tried to discourage hospices from enrolling long-stay patients by placing a cap on how much they can collect on an average per patient. Hospices that exceed the cap have to repay the money. The whistleblowers contend that a Seracorp avoided exceeding the cap, which was $22,386 in 2008, by recruiting last breath referrals, or patients expected to die within a few days. 
so that the average would stay low. In its quest for new patients, Acericare sent employees to patrol hospitals right along with Meals on Wheels programs and go door to door in housing run by the Department of Housing and Urban Development. So that's an example of large-scale Medicare fraud involving a hospice. However, now let's take a look at that hospice in Texas that took fraud to a whole new level. Back in 2012, Bradley and Amy Harris decided to open a hospice in Frisco, which is north of Dallas. Bradley Harris has a background in accounting. He has no background whatsoever in uh, medicine. So Novus Healthcare operated for about four years, and to my knowledge, there were no complaints regarding their services. Then in late 2015, the FBI suddenly shows up with a warrant regarding accusations of Medicare fraud. Now, some lawyers in Dallas suspect that the warrant was started due to the complaints of a whistleblower, because if you know a company is ripping off the federal government and you report it, then you may get a percentage as a reward of anything the federal government can reclaim as a result of the fraud investigation. Well, Meredith, the health care company is located inside this Frisco office building. The allegations here are troubling. The FBI spelled out its investigation in a search warrant obtained by NBC5. These are the offices of Novus Healthcare Services in Frisco. Its website says it offers hospice and home health care services all over North Texas. Brad Harris founded the company. This is his public profile picture on Facebook. So, as a result of the search, Eventually, 16 employees were charged with Medicare fraud. Five doctors, five nurses, the CEO, Bradley Harris, and his lovely wife, Amy, and a few executives. New tonight at 6, the owner and 15 other employees at a North Texas hospice are under federal indictment tonight. We first told you about the FBI raid involving Novus Health Services and hospice last year. Well, tonight, more than a dozen people are accused in a $60 million health care fraud scheme. Chris Gutierrez, live in the newsroom with new details. Chris. Yeah, hi, Meredith. The FBI raided the company's offices back in September of 2015, and tonight, this 31-page indictment right here says the company was bilking Medicare out of money four years before that. Bradley Harris owns Novus Healthcare. The indictment claims he, along with doctors and nurses, billed Medicare and Medicaid for services they never provided or were not allowed. It says doctors were paid kickbacks but provided little to no oversight over the Novus patients. And perhaps most troubling here, the indictment also says Harris and others gave drugs to some patients without a legitimate medical purpose. It also claims that doctors certified that they met with patients face to face when they didn't. In one example, Dr. Mark Gibbs would have traveled 200 miles to 19 different locations in a single day all before 1.30 p.m. Another doctor claims that she saw patients when she was actually in Hawaii or Mexico. New information in a story about a hospice agency in Frisco that is under FBI investigation. As we told you last night, agents searched Novus Health Services in September. And according to a search warrant, the company's owner told nurses to overdose patients with morphine to speed up their deaths, all to make more money. In a sworn statement to get a search warrant for emails, an FBI agent writes, Harris, who has no medical training or licenses, would direct his employed nurses to overdose hospice patients with palliative medications such as morphine to hasten death. Harris, a licensed accountant, allegedly instructed one nurse to increase a patient's medication to four times the maximum allowed. The FBI says the employee told Harris that he or she would, but did not comply with the request because it would have killed the patient. The court document also claims Harris told another nurse to overdose three patients, but doesn't say what happened to them. The FBI quotes Harris as telling one worker, you need to make this patient go bye-bye. In another case, asking health care executives to find patients who would die within 24 hours, saying of one of his patients, if this expletive would just die. The level of corruption was just so rampant, it, it's almost mind-blowing. There's an 18-page affidavit that was filed by one of the executives that has since pled guilty to Medicare fraud. And some of the things it talks about, they were falsifying do not resuscitate orders. The doctors were writing blank prescriptions, just signing it and handing it over to the hospice so they could fill whatever type of prescription they wanted for any patient they liked. Bradley Harris was making all of the medical decisions. He was deciding what medications the patients could stay on when they entered hospice. He was also deciding when it was time to bring outpatients 
in the hospice. In addition, of course, he was telling the nurses when to overdose patients based on a timeline, so they didn't exceed their cap. Now, it should be mentioned that some nurses refused to euthanize patients, and if they refused to euthanize on time, then they would simply be replaced by other staff members that would do the work. But many of the staff members were all on board. I mean, 16 were indicted. You have to know, these people knew what was going on. And that's what kind of amazes me. Dallas is a big city, but still, how do you find that many sociopaths in the medical field, including five doctors, that are willing to participate in something this corrupt, and willing, in many cases, to commit murder? And even better, Bradley was texting the nurses, and the nurses were texting each other regarding which patients to kill and how to do it. In one text he wrote, I told the chick if she would just give her one mil of Ativan and turn her on her side, she would die. Jessica Love, a nursing supervisor, admitted her orders to the nurse included turning off the beneficiary's oxygen, increasing the Ativan and morphine, and turning the beneficiary on their left side. Love said in a text message, the technique works like a little charm, the document stated. The patient died five hours later. The nurses also joked back and forth about killing patients via text message. You know, I was thinking, patients are sometimes on continuous care for days before I come in, and they almost always pass before my first shift ends. What does that say about me, LOL? Love responded, that you're a great nurse, smiley face. And from the FBI affidavit, the patients Harris liked best when he was near the annual billing limit were the ones that would die within 24 hours. Harris is quoted as saying, save my ass from the cap. So Novus Health Services did close after the FBI raid in 2015 and after it came out all over the news that they were killing patients. However, that did not slow Bradley down. He actually ran another hospice by the name of Dependable Hospice Care, as well as running Choice Plus Home Health, which was the new name for Harris's Novus Home Health Company, according to the FBI. One thing about Bradley Harris, the guy has balls. Because after Novus Healthcare was shut down and all the allegations came out about them killing patients, he decided to sue some former employees that dared take jobs at other facilities. A lot of court action involving this company that we're finding out about. According to lawsuits, Medicare and Medicaid stopped paying Novus soon after that FBI raid and the company stopped providing hospice services. But that didn't stop Novus from suing several former employees for taking new jobs. Those workers complaining they never got their final paychecks either. Novus also filed lawsuits against several former employees. This one against former nursing director Patricia Armstrong and a number of companies accused Armstrong of violating a no-compete clause by going to work for a competitor. Another accused four former marketing executives of the same thing. They responded by arguing the FBI raid essentially put Novus out of business, writing, Novus and its CEO Brad Harris had their offices raided by the FBI for euthanizing patients for profits and committing Medicaid, Medicare fraud. Novus never disclosed this fact to the court. Both cases were later dropped. Harris has had no comment. The Bradley is still out um, awaiting trial. There was an article that appeared last January regarding Bradley, which stated that Harris and his wife Amy violated conditions of their release by fraudulently applying for a $50,000 loan from Compass Bank and then losing all of it gambling online just three months after their indictment. In the following months, an FBI agent learned that Bradley Harris had bet even more, sending $114,000 to an online horse betting company, according to court documents. Some of the other 16 individuals that were indicted have since entered plea deals admitting to Medicare fraud. So it's been over three years since all of this came out. And the big question is, has anyone involved ever been charged with murder, manslaughter, abuse of a dependent adult, or anything in relation to what they did to those patients? And the answer is no. These people really do have a license to kill. They do not, however, have a license to commit Medicare fraud. I'll end this video with a lovely marketing piece created by Novus Health Services. And as you watch this, I think you'll be able to tell that these are people that you can trust. They really do care about you and your family. I think hospice can change lives.
I can't say enough wonderful things about what hospice can do for the community. My goal is to get everyone excited about hospice. It's an amazing, beautiful um, piece that everyone's entitled to. It's not just help for the patients, it's help for the entire family. We really become integrated into these patients' lives and into their families' lives. and. You know, we form bonds that last a lifetime. This whole thing is not about us, it's about the patient. People don't know the things that we do, and I've taken care of so many people that have gotten on hospice and been afraid of it, and then later on have been so thankful that it's come into their lives, and actually patients' lives improve sometimes. My job is to walk into the home of a beloved, to recognize I'm walking on holy ground, to realize the profound privilege it is that I have been invited into a very sacred space of vulnerability.